Hello and welcome to Addiction Free. I'm your host, Evangelist Candy Rose. Well, as you may know, I'm a traveling TV show and this time I'm in Houston, Texas. Woo! And I am so excited to be, we are actually filming this in a thrift store. It's Saving Grace Super Thrift Store here, right here in Houston. And the CEO and the president of uh, Saving Grace, because Saving Grace is a, a home for women, a recovery home. And uh, pastors Don and Susan Norton uh, are the CEO and president of the uh, home for men and women. There's also a men's home called Project Hope. And matter of fact, uh, probably the next show that you're gonna see next week will be Project Hope with the men's testimonies. I love getting testimonies. And I know you like hearing them because you see, it, it proves that when a person totally surrenders to Christ, there that transformation comes because we know we couldn't change ourselves. And we've tried many times, but what was missing was the power of the Holy Spirit. And when we say yes to Jesus with our whole heart, see that's the key, the commitment with our whole heart, that's when, that's when the transformation comes and then we can actually live the life. Matter of fact, I'll be leading you in a prayer to the Lord at the end if you haven't given your, Lord, your uh, life to the Lord yet. And I am so excited that I am here with my friend and Savannah. Savannah, you work in this thrift store, mm -hmm. and you're also a student yes, at Saving Grace. Mm -hmm. And uh, Michael, he is the uh, director, and he and Jessica, mm -hmm. and they refer you for you to be one of the people to give your testimony. Well, I am honored to be here. <laughs> so tell us what, what what God has done in your life. Well, and um. He's done a lot. He's done, um, first of all, I want to thank God for everything he's done in life and talk about how great and big he is. He's just been doing miracles in my life since I was young. I actually, as a little girl, used to see angels and talk about them to my Aww. mom. And, and then I remember some of them as I got a little older. So he's always really kind of been in my, showing up in my life. And, um, and so whenever I, I turned um, 13, I played soccer a lot. Um, um, was into sports, running constantly. I had games every weekend, I, um, competitive uh, games, and traveling all the time. And anyway, um, during a, one of the games, I collapsed. Uh, they went to the. I went to the doctor, found out I had a tumor in my hip, and um, it had over a week's time had um, grown all the way to the size of a grapefruit. From and oh. anyways, had the had. It looked at, and um, they said I was. I went to MD Anderson Cancer Center here in Houston, and they said I was gonna almost 100% lose my leg. But um, they just wanted to wow. um, give me some chemo treatments, and they were just kind of took me through the whole thing. And I had accepted I was going in as a freshman. I was gonna be bald and beautiful wow. with my leg, so I was just um, accepting and ready to go. And then. Um, I hadn't, I had never really, we weren't really in church, hadn't really prayed before, but we, I just knew about him and believed in him. I just hadn't really practiced it. And um, I was really nervous about getting, uh, going into surgery and stuff. So I went downstairs and um, before and got a Bible and I started reading just scriptures out of it. I am, um, I prayed and just felt God tell me, you know, you don't have cancer, you're going to be okay. Woke my mom up, told her, the doctors called that morning, said that they wanted to redo some tests, that they didn't, they were, the results were um, unsure. And anyways, God healed me. I had to get a hip replacement, but, wow. did, you know, completely healed, Wonderful. no cancer, nothing. And wow. so that was when he showed up and that's when I, start, that's when when I started, started no, believing. Believing that there really was a God. Because yeah. the first thing he did was he showed you that he's the healer. Yeah, he did. And then I, you know, my life kind of went, um, went from there. I, I started playing soccer again, did all the things that the doctor said I couldn't because oh. our God's bigger. Wow. And then I, um, I after high school, got, um, I got into, you know, into trouble here and there, got uh, depressed and turned to drugs and um, kind of followed followed in after uh, some of my family, but I'm breaking that generational curse. All right. And God uh, showed up. He kept pulling, kept uh, take, pulling me in, pulling me in. And I finally, you know, my family's always helped me and helped me get into this program. And oh, wonderful. And I came in and gave my life, rededicated because I backslid. But um, Wow. I've given my life back to him, refilled with the Holy Spirit. Oh, and he's just, I know Savannah. I'm supposed to stay in the ministry. I've got two children yes. that my family's helping me with, and oh. I'm just going to be a great mom to them and lead them to God like um, 
he's showed me how to do, and I'm very thankful. And Oh, that's wonderful. And you know, that's what the Lord wants to do in all of our lives. Mm -hmm. And not only does he want to save us, but then for us then to go on and be an influence and an inspiration mm -hmm. to our family, our friends, and all those that know us. Mm -hmm. Because that's, that's purpose, see? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we're just e existing in life. Life is more than just having fun and making money and uh, um, trying to find love in all yeah, the wrong places exactly. and faces, but it's having a relationship with our God. Uh, Savannah, do you have any last thoughts of what, uh, anything that you'd like to encourage our viewers? Would you like to look into camera and, and just uh, tell them what God has laid on your heart about them giving their life yeah. to the Lord? Well, I'd just like to encourage you to, you know, never give up. You're, it's, you're never too far gone. You're never too um, bad off as a mother. You have, you never, God's never going <clears> to <throat> turn your back on on you. He's always going to yes. be there to take you back in and, yes. and show you the way of life, which is through Him. And He yes. fills you with that peace and yes. that joy that you, you're searching for in all the wrong places. He gives you that. And I just want to encourage you to to turn to Him for it and yes. turn away from all those things. And you will be happy. You will be confident in yourself. You will yes. feel beautiful. You yes. will be beautiful. And mm. you'll be a, an ama the amazing woman or man that you're trying to be through God. He'll give you that. And I just want to encourage you to, to seek Him first. And He'll give you what you're looking for. Yes. Oh, Savannah. Thank you, darling. Mm -hmm. Awesome. <laughs> I have another guest for you here. We have two more guests for you, so don't go away. Matter of fact, call somebody, text them, and tell them we're on the air. And here's the other guest I was telling you about, Kimberly. Kimberly, thank you, honey. Thank you for being my guest. And what little I've got to talk to you here, I'm real excited to hear what God's done in your life. I'm from Long Island, New York, and I'm 50 years old. And um, I've lived many lives in my 50 years, and by the grace of God, he's pulled me through every time. Um, I was raised Catholic, uh, not a very religious family. Um, what seemed from the outside to be a normal childhood. I was a good kid, a gymnast, a cheerleader. Um, but I had a dark secret as I was a kid. Um, from the age of about 3 to 12, my grandfather molested me. So I was really good at covering up Aww. my feelings and faking it in yes. life, you know. Because, um, you know, I always thought it was my fault. And, yes. Um, you know, so that was where my life started. Um, you know, I didn't really um, do drugs besides dabbling with marijuana and stuff as a younger kid. Um, later in my teens, I... Um, um, I, I found out my dad was having into cocaine. That was like something that was not mm. like I was against because of what it had done to him. Um, he had come out that he was homosexual, Aww. and he left us um, five, us five kids and my mom. And um, um, you know, it was his father who molested me, so I kind of felt like you know mm. something that happened to him in his childhood. Cause it we probably that was when I came out with it, and then I was also dealing with. Why didn't my dad protect me from him? Like he left me with his dad, and you know, knowing what he was, you know. Um, anyway, um, when I was about 19, 20, I met a guy who was a drug dealer, and um, who would think that cocaine became my drug of choice, and um, I got really messed up um, until I was 22, and I was, became pregnant, and um, he wouldn't leave that lifestyle, so I moved home with my mom. Um, fast forward, I met another man a couple of years later, and he was daddy of both of my kids. Okay. Um, he was really good to me, but I didn't really feel that I deserved that. I kept pushing him out of my life because oh. he loved me, and I was like, ugh, leave me alone, you know, and I guess I never felt that I deserved happiness or someone to treat me that way. So I, um, you know, I became a single mom, and... I lived through my kids. I had a lot of really good, normal years, whatever you want to call normal. Um, but like I said, I lived through my kids and found happiness in loving them. Um, you know, and as they got older, um, I started to feel, you know, as they didn't need me so much, um, you know, I, it was years that I didn't date. And, um, you know, they were in high school, and I met a man who was, again, he was a big drinker, but then he. I found out he was into drugs, and then I started using again, and mm. um, he became very abusive. Um, uh, 
and um, I put up with it for a long time and covered it up again and uh, you know I kept him in my life because I felt like that's what I deserved and um, mm. I took his abuse and started using it again um, I actually had to move to Florida to get away from him because I kept taking him back um, in Florida you know I was really good for a few years and then I um, I started getting into um, hanging out with like some rich and famous people and um, going to like elite parties I ended up getting raped by what kind of parties um, elite elite Oh, elite. elite. Okay. Like okay. These people. And you said you got raped. I got raped by oh. a um, professional football player, and oh wow, my life started spiraling down from there. Um, I started um, drinking a lot and um, dating younger men, and um, um, I ended up my aunt. They, the only family I had that lived in Florida was my aunt and uncle, and I know they had a past of drug abuse, and um, my aunt ended up passing away, and. Her husband um, started enabling me with crack cocaine, and um, you know not, I take responsibility for using. But I, you know, after them were being raped, and I just was kind of helpless and really didn't I know, care. I know. Anymore. We get like that. L life hardens us. Mm -hmm. So finally, like you know, through a period of that time, my son had moved back to New York. I was like just isolating myself and. Um, Finally, I was like in such despair, and I was so broken that I just, I got, I got on a plane and went back to my family in New York, and um, I got help. I put myself into an outpatient um, rehab, and I was doing well, and um, for two years, and then I met another abuser in my life. Oh boy! Um, beaten up and broken um, in the hospital, and then the psych ward wanting to kill myself, oh. and. Um, um, you know, I was lost. I just didn't want to do it anymore. I was so, um, so broken. Um, well, how, well, how did you end up coming to Saving Grace? Well, I ended up leaving the hospital and going to a women's safe home, and um, uh, I was still, like, down in the pits, and I started having visions. I started having visions, and I started saying, God is good, and um, I, one day I woke up and I had a vision of myself and um, I was like an angel and with all this gold around me oh. and I thought I was I thought I was going crazy I thought that you know and I was you know I had oh. the enemy pulling from one side and the Lord pulling me out and one day I was just like really down and I was just like what's going on I need the Lord in my life and being Catholic I couldn't it wasn't enough for me I called a good friend of mine and he was friends of the um, director of this program, Mike Vecchio, and his yes, wife, yes. and he called them, and I spoke to them on the phone. It's February of, when? of this year. Oh, this year. And so seven months. Okay. And, um, when I got here, I didn't know what to expect, you know, and um, I was never in a Pentecostal church. Okay. First week I came in, it was a Thursday, <laughs> Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of that week, we were in a revival. Oh, and awesome. I went into the church, and it was like talking in tongues and ah. slain in the spirit and I was like what's going on here yes, but by yes. the third night there you was knew a, it was real though didn't you yes you could feel I it I felt it yes. I was still so like unsure yes. but uh, the yes. music drew me in yes oh um, by the third night there was a pastor uh, Shane Warren from um, Louisiana yes he um he pulled me out of the pews out of hundreds of people and said you in the leopard shirt, you're covered. You got all this gold around you, like an <gasps> angel, like your vision. And I was just like blown away. I was like, that confirms everything See? because I'm not crazy. Like the Lord That's has been right. pulling me out, and, and it is God speaking to you. And I mean, so you gave your life to the Lord that yes. night. Yes, and, and I've now been filled with the Holy Spirit since. And um, oh, that is I'm wonderful. Just, I am like overwhelmed with the Lord. Oh, like, He's just showing me like where. My family told me I was running my whole life. Yes. I realized I was just been searching, you know. Yes. Um, Looking for love in all yes. the wrong places and I had faces. This empty part in my I heart know. that's only he could fill. And I know. I just I was always so alone. It could be in the room with a hundred people and feel like you know I'm so alone. Yeah. And I know now that I'm not You're alone. You're not. No. I know that I can touch other girls. Yes. And, and help yes. save them through what I've been through. Um, yes, the that's people, it. This, my sisters in this program, we all just love on each other. And I just, I mean, at my age, I, I, the younger girls were all from different parts of the country and different yes. ages, and we all just love each other so much. Aww. And 
Um, I just, it's overwhelming. I, I can't thank Saving Grace and Project Hope enough. Um, and um, the scripture that I stand on is um, Psalms 18:16. He reached down from on high and rescued me. He drew me out of deep waters. Yes. And I love the Lord with all my heart. Oh, thank you, darling. I can tell you do. <laughs> yes. And folks, you hang in there. I'm going to lead you in a prayer at the end here Amen. because let me tell you, this is where the true peace, joy, and the purpose comes. God Amen. bless you, honey. Thank you so sure. much. Thank you for having me. Well, I have another guest for you. Her name is Tracy. Tracy, I'm excited to hear what God's done in your life. We're gonna, I'm going to let you brag on Jesus. Hi, my name is Tracy. I'm 43. I am a single mom of two boys. They're 19 and 22. Um, I guess my story starts off when I was probably about six years old. Um, I grew up with a mother that was in addiction. And the first time I remember her going to rehab, I was probably about six. And she has only been clean and sober for almost eight years now. Well, praise God. That's good. <laughs> well, all right. So um, I grew up with that. Okay. And when I was seven, um, she gave me up to my dad. Okay. And my dad raised me from the time I was seven until I graduated high school and went out on my own. Wow. So... You know, it started out, I didn't even start anything until I hit my 30s. Okay. And my kids were, you know, teenagers by then and in high school, and my oldest son was getting ready to graduate high school, and, you know, it started off What were you doing? Um, it started off with marijuana. Okay. Started smoking, and then actually one of my son's friends introduced me to, uh, you know, like crushing up the pain pills and snorting them and stuff. Okay. And then I got hooked Hydrocodone? on... Hydrocodone? Oxycontin? Yeah. Any, any Anything. Pain any pain pills. Any pain pills. You know, pills. that's a real big thing nowadays is oh, yeah. prescription pills, especially the painkillers. Yes. Well, so how did... Uh, what was the turning point? How did you end up seeking help and coming to Saving Grace? Well, actually, um, it's probably... I've been here for six months. I'm halfway through. Okay. Um, and it was probably been close to a year ago now I ended up getting with the wrong guy okay and with him I had just hit I had lost my job you know I lost my house we were living in the projects mm. you know in the middle of the hood around all the drug dealers and everything it just wasn't oh. a good place yes oh but that's all I could afford and, yes you know and I ended up with the wrong guy and I ended up getting uh, hooked on everything else through him because I just got, the depression was just so bad I didn't realize it that I basically gave up and didn't care. Okay. You know, I was on, uh, I was on cocaine, I was on meth, I was on heroin. If wow. You, if you could melt it, cook it, anything, and put it in a needle, I was doing it. Wow. Okay, so what, how did you <laughs> end up actually getting to Saving Grace? Well, actually, my sister works with the ministry. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, she's the awesome. one that started and runs Heels to Halos. Okay. And uh, my son actually came over to visit me one day because I actually ended up losing him two months before he graduated high school. Oh, okay. Wow. And you were hitting rock bottom, weren't oh, you? Oh, yeah. But that, praise God, at the bottom, there's a way up, oh, isn't yeah. it? Jesus. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> okay. And, uh, well, actually, my ex-husband, actually, my ex-husband is a cop, and he found out who I was with and ended up making my son move out and move in with him. Okay. And he came over to visit me one night, and he literally sat on me and held me down and dialed my sister and put the phone up to my ear and told me, you're going to talk to your sister. Well, awesome. Because <laughs> she wants to talk to you. She has something she wants oh. you to do, and you're going to listen to oh. her. Oh, and you did. And I did. And you came into the program. Yes, All right, and when you got into the program, when did you give your life to Jesus? Um, actually, how long was you I here? I felt until the that spirit. Happened? And I actually gave it up to him, actually, at the conference in Mississippi. Really? Oh, because, folks, uh, 
Pastor Jared Flanagan had a, a, a SOAR conference in Mississippi, mm -hmm. and I was down there filming, and I got to meet meet all these precious women from Project Hope and Save, oh, or Saving Grace, rather, Pastor Don and Susan Norton. Mm -hmm. And so you got saved during that. Yes, That ma is awesome. Actually, the night at the barbecue when they were doing baptisms in the river, that's when I did it. Awesome. I mean, you, oh. I went from having everything, my kids, a full-time job, a house I'd had for 20-some years. Yes. And within See. a matter of four months, I lost completely everything and yes. was about ready to be on the street. And, you know, you give your life up to him, and just so many things have happened already, more than I could have even imagined. And okay. Just, the six months that by the time I graduate, I can't imagine what's going to happen. That is awesome. It's God amazing. restores. Oh, yeah, definitely. Plus more. Now, folks, I want to encourage you. Give your life to the Lord. You've heard these testimonies. You've heard how the devastation. I always use this scripture most of the time when I bring you a salvation message. John 10:10. 10, 10. The Bible says that the thief has come to steal, kill, and destroy. And that's what he does. I'm a former stripper and a prostitute and, and a former addict myself. But I'll tell you what, when I made a whole heart commitment to Jesus with my whole heart, Holy Spirit came in and gave me the power to live it. And this is why I'm so motivated to bring you these TV shows and to hear wonderful testimonies like Tracy's and Kimberly's and uh, Savannah's because every week I want you to know that what Jesus has done for all of them and for me, he wants to do for you. So if you're sitting there and you're dealing with any kind of addiction, and may in fact, maybe you're not even dealing with addiction. Maybe you think you're just such a good person, you don't really need the Lord or you don't need to go to church. But the Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So I'm going to give you that opportunity to have that peace, joy, and purpose. You want to agree with me, Tracy? Oh, yes, Agree with me right now that they're, <laughs> that they're going to do that because we know He is there, He loves us, and He can restore. Mm -hmm. And he wants to restore with the devil. The other part of that, John 10:10, 10, 10, Jesus says, I have come that you might have life and life more abundantly. It's time, folks. Stop the madness. Don't let the devil do any more destruction in your life. Sure, you're still going to have problems after you get saved, but the thing is, is that now you're belonging to him. He's going to turn it all out, and it's going to end up being a testimony. He'll see you through it. So just say this after me. Say, Jesus. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. I want to live for you with my whole heart. I'm willing to leave the old lifestyle behind and follow you, Jesus. Thank you for dying on the cross for me, for loving me. I love you too, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, folks, you said that you meant it. You go to church. Quit hanging with the people you used to hang with <laughs> and talk to your Heavenly Father because He's there for you. And Psalms 107.2 says, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom He has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. And He has redeemed us, hasn't He? Amen, He has. God bless you. Jesus loves you, and so do we. Addiction Free Ministry presents powerful resources written by its CEO, Candy Rose. Her autobiography, Spirits of Seduction, proves Christ can transform any lifestyle from X rated to G rated. Candy Rose believes testimonies build faith, encouraging others they too can have that new life in Christ. Go to Amazon.com or their website, AddictionFreeMinistry.com, to receive these life changing resources for yourself or a loved one. There is help, there is hope. My name is Mike Vecchio. I'm the executive director for Project Hope Recovery Center. Um, we have a men's facility in Houston, Texas, and we just opened a men's facility in Fort Walton Beach, Florida. And our goal for these men that come in there is to develop a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, we know that that is the only thing that can set somebody free and keep them free from these addictions, from these bondages that are in their life. Um, for anyone that, that needs a change and is at the point of just ready to, to surrender and, and have decided that, that they don't know what's best for themselves. Um, we just pray that they would come and get the help, anyone that wants the help. Uh, we want to be able to, to help set them free from these addictions. 
Hi, my name is Jessica Vecchio. I'm the Women's Program Director for Saving Grace Women's Home in Houston, Texas. It is a 12-month residential Christian facility that helps women overcome addiction, eating disorders, cutting, depression, anything that keeps you from being the, the woman that God intended you to be. They are not patients there. You are students. We love on you. It's a home setting. For any more information, you can go to our website. Thank you so much. I just encourage, if you're struggling with any kind of addiction or you know someone uh, in, a, in your family or someone, just maybe one layer of, of connection of a person removed from you, please proactively take the initiative to reach out to them and say, hey, I saw this program where, you know what, there's actually help. There's actually hope. We'll be happy to talk to you, happy to bring you in or talk to you about that loved one that needs to come in. Hi, my name is Robert Scott. I'm the program director of the Father's House Ministry. We are a Christian discipleship program for men and women located in Donaldson, Arkansas. What we are is a recovery ministry. We and if we use the commands outlined for the God outlined for you in the Bible on how to live your life, and use that to help people assist and and provide a drug, alcohol, and nicotine free environment where people can learn and practice self discipline. Like it doesn't cost anything to come to our ministry, and we would love for you to get some information from us. Thank you. I'm Richie Willis, and this is my wife, Carly Willis. Uh, we both run homes in Hot Springs, Arkansas. We both come out of addictions and out of a long life of bondage of of drugs and alcohol, and uh, we've been set free by the blood of Jesus, and uh, God has radically taken over our lives, and now we both have ministries. She has a, a house for women, and I have a house for two houses for men, um, and they're faith-based houses, and uh, we minister to these men and women. Hers is called Carly's Home, and mine is called Solomon's Porch, and I have nine men she has five women, and we minister to them and love on them, and we're, they're all held accountable, and we're just building the kingdom of God with one person at a time, and we're just excited about these ministries and what God is doing, and uh, we just want to uh, thank God that he's using us and wants to use you too in your ministry, and we just thank God for it. Satan had already picked out my grave. His plan had moved forward to put me away. I drifted so far, would anyone care that I'd soon be lost? I knew my destruction was a matter of time, but Jesus appeared and said, this one is mine, now I'm safe from all harm. 